Hey everybody and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast and in today's forecast we'll be breaking down another massive severe weather event that will impact the United States with all modes of severe weather this week. We'll also be discussing the threat for another winter storm in the Midwest as we head closer to Thursday and Friday. I'll give you the latest breakdown on both of these situations and more in this forecast but let's first begin with what's happening across the United States today. We're first going to begin with the central United States. That is where a very strong high pressure system is currently located and this is what's been bringing very cold air to the southern plains and even the Dixie Alley over the past 48 hours. Many areas have been under freeze warnings but luckily this will start to move further to the east which is when we'll start to notice some warmer air start to trickle back into parts of the United States by Tuesday and Wednesday. Also back over on the west coast we're watching for a threat of another low pressure system in the upcoming days. That is what it's going to eventually bring another threat for a severe weather outbreak in the southern tier of the United States, along with the threat for another winter storm in the Midwest. We're also noticing a little bit of thunderstorm activity today back down in Florida. This will not be severe. And then also our other low pressure system that's still located back in Canada. That is what brought the snow and as well as that severe weather the past few days that is finally moving out of the United States. But what is to come over the next few days is actually going to be quite interesting. Let's first begin with this week, really Monday and Tuesday is when we're going to be starting to watch for that high pressure system to move to the east. This is what's been obviously bringing us that colder air to the United States, but it will eventually trickle off to the east. We're not really going to see a whole lot of impacts out of that, but we'll eventually be watching back over to our west another low pressure system to develop. There will be two different low pressure systems, though. Our first one will likely be Tuesday night into Wednesday. That is what's going to actually bring the threat for some snow across the northern plains. It'll be a pretty weak low pressure system, maybe a little bit of rain as well to the Midwest. Not not really overly impressive, but might bring a few inches of snow to those over Minnesota. But the much bigger concern will be across the central and southern plains as we go into Thursday. That is when a low pressure system is likely to develop over the central plains. And this is what could bring the threat for severe weather and maybe a little string of flooding potential from those from Oklahoma all the way back through Pennsylvania. There might be a stationary frontal boundary that we'll have to watch for pretty closely. But going into late Thursday night into Fridays when severe weather will likely develop, more specific details on this here in just a second eventually going through friday into saturday that low pressure system moves off to the east and northeast we might even see a winter storm across areas near the midwest back through the northern ohio valley into michigan those areas will have to be on alert for maybe a little bit of snow and even into the northeast but again things become much more uncertain the further we go into the forecast but in terms of severe weather there is already a slight risk for severe weather across oklahoma and as well as north texas and this is for thursday of this week the main threat will be damaging winds, large hail, and maybe a few tornadoes as well. So we're really watching for all modes of severe weather across the southern plains. Now, in terms of the low-level jet, this is what gives us an idea of how much rotation there will be in the supercell thunderstorms that develop on Thursday. Now, obviously, things can change as we get closer, but there's some good news here. The low-level jet is not forecasted to be overly strong. In fact, winds between 35 to 45 knots is a low to maybe moderate low-level jet, so there will at least be a low-end tornado threat, but it does not seem to be a very significant one, at least at this time. I would expect more of a damaging wind threat out of this particular severe weather event. In terms of the instability, this is one of the bad news. Uh, we are looking at a pretty decent amount of instability between 1,500 to 2,000 joules per kilogram. That is not too far off from what we just saw this past Thursday in terms of instability. It was slightly higher for this past event, so overall they do compare a little bit, but it is a little bit lower in terms of that factor. Now, in terms of the timing, Right now, the European model is estimating that storms will develop over Oklahoma as we go throughout the day, really, on Thursday. Storms will likely fire up, though, back through Texas going into Thursday evening. So after sunset is probably going to be the best chance for some storms. So timing is obviously, as well, a little bit different from this past event. We'll probably be looking at storms more of a nocturnal threat more than anything. Once we go through the overnight hours, closer to like 4 to 5 in the morning on Friday morning, storms will eventually move into eastern Texas, and these might still produce damaging winds. And eventually, that's severe weather threat will move off to the east where we already have a slight risk for severe weather from really southeast Texas all the way back through Tennessee. We'll be really watching for more of a damaging wind threat as we go into Friday. In terms of instability, it is going to be lower off this direction. We'll be talking really between zero to maybe a thousand joules per kilogram. Highest values currently being estimated back down in Louisiana. Now, it doesn't mean a whole lot for a damaging wind threat in this sort of sense. We'll probably be looking at at least some scattered damaging winds from again southeast Texas back through Tennessee. 
This will primarily be during the afternoon and evening hours on Friday. So we'll be watching for that threat. I get a lot more specific details in terms of timing and threats as we do get closer. And obviously, since we're still far out, there is some uncertainty there. Now, let's talk about the winter weather for this week in terms of snow, because there are going to be a couple of different areas to watch for this week for maybe a threat of a winter storm or two across the United States. Beginning with late Tuesday night into Wednesday, that is when we'll be watching for a weak low pressure system to bring some snowfall to areas in the northern plains and maybe even into the Midwest. We'll have to watch that closely. I wouldn't say it's a full-blown winter storm quite yet, but we might see upwards of six inches of snow. And then going into late Wednesday night into Thursday, another little string here of a maybe a stationary frontal boundary will develop. This could actually bring the threat for a little bit of snow in Nebraska and Iowa. Now, the thing is, it has to be very precise here because the timing is really critical in terms of if we'll actually see snow or not. So stay tuned on that. But a bigger event may occur going into maybe Friday or Saturday across the Midwest. That is when that low pressure system that's going to bring severe weather might become a bit more organized. And this could lead to the threat for maybe a winter storm across the northern Ohio Valley in the Midwest and eventually into the Northeast. But again, things have to be really perfect for this sort of scenario to happen. So we'll keep you posted on the latest details with that. Obviously, a lot of things can change between now and then. In terms of snowfall accumulation with that little first maybe winter storm, and this is just an estimate from the European model, we're probably going to be looking at between three to six inches of snow with the highest snowfall totals, most likely going to be in northern Minnesota, which is where we might see a couple of isolated spots get near eight inches. And for the first day of spring, it's not too far. We're only a couple of days from it. Temperatures are going to be very cold in the northern half of the United States. Meanwhile, temperatures will be high as the low 70s in areas like Kansas. So it looks like a great first day of spring is right ahead. Thank you for watching. Make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you've not already. This forecast is brought to you by Platinum Contracting and All Dents Repair.